KF7. Hey, how's it sounding over here? I'm kind of behind the house here. Is it is it coming in all right? Yeah, it's not too bad. You're fuzzing a little bit. Um, must have moved around a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm in a better spot now. How's this sound? Excellent. Cool. Well, you are going to be on a YouTube video. This is uh, this is uh. D2S dad over here on the uh, on the radio here, so I'm talking to him live. Yeah, so um, you guys are gonna be home today. I think we're gonna head into town uh, a little bit later. Yeah, we'll be here. Um, you know, just doing the tax thing. Hey, do you have that old uh, J pole antenna that I made for that little radio of yours still? I do, but I have never I've never hooked it up. You know, it'd be interesting to try that uh, at some point, see if we can get um, simplex from here. I don't, I don't think, I, I don't know, maybe I could do it if I put the antenna up on the top of the house. Yeah, I don't know, I've never needed, you know, since we've been talking, I've never needed one, so I never did put it up, but it would be interesting D2S to dad. what kind of uh, uh, reception you'd get. All right, well, it's been a good little radio check. Um, just kind of wanted to show people in here how this works, and I'm going to do a little uh, video on this probably tomorrow or the day after on uh, on kind of basics of ham radio. So it should be kind of fun and, uh, you know, cool to talk to you. The time is 1.01 p.m. Yeah, you too. The, the check worked out pretty well, and uh, so I'm, I'm uh, going to... All right, cool, sounds good. This is uh, KF7, and I'll be clear. All right, so that's a basic ham radio, and so, as you saw, D2S Dad and I, we kind of periodically check our radios to make sure they're working for, like, let's say, emergencies, or if we need to, uh, if we need to talk to each other. Um, <clears throat> we had some, what was that thing that just recently happened? There was a tsunami warning here and it shut down all the radio, all the uh, phone communication. So these things always work and I'm going to show you kind of more in depth on how this kind of stuff works. Both D2S Dad and I are ham radio licensed. So we've been licensed for about nine, eight years now, eight or nine years. We don't really talk about it much on the channel, but I'm going to do a little bit of a kind of a breakdown on how the, the basics of this work. Uh, so you guys can get an idea of it, but kind of wanted to show you in real time how we, uh, how it works. Pretty simple. We're using a repeater that is um, just north of us, so we both can hit that. Really, and it's probably it's probably about 15 miles away from both of us. So, what would you say our our line of sight to where D2S Dad is probably 10 miles, 15 miles. So, as you can see, a little tiny radio, we can talk just fine. So, um, we're going to go over the basics of that and how that works, and kind of show you how that breaks down. Uh, when I was talking to D2S Dad, I was just using this simple um, transceiver right here. This is a uh, this is my Yesu uh, VX5R, and you know what's funny about this kind of stuff is these are uh, this is probably about a 15, 16 year old radio right here, and it's made out of cast uh, die cast aluminum. They're actually um, pretty powerful, powerful radios. This one is rated to five watts, so you have I think you have a quarter watt, half watt, one watt, and then it jumps to five watts. So you can you can change your your power settings right here. Uh, my buttons are some of the buttons are long since worn off, but again, it's an old radio, and um, let me turn it on here. And the button you know, it's starting to get a little bit a little bit worn out, um, but you can change your your memory settings with this and your volume control, and you have your you know squelch right here light and they're basically built like tanks so a lot of times when you'll see a radio you know at say you know walmart or whatever for you know it's it's usually uh you know kind of a consumer style radio it's like an it, they consider those frs or family radio services and there's service band and those are like i think there's five or six frequencies that you can use on that for free then they market these other ones as gmrs and a lot of times they say they're about a five watt radio 
Um, I they're they're actually not five watt radios. Um, they might be five watts on the internal circuitry, but they're not five watts of power out to the antenna. Um, and I can tell you that just from practical uh, knowledge, because when I run this on five watts, if I if I'm out in the woods and I really want to get um, some reception and I want to be heard, I'll crank this thing up to full power. And after talking on it for a few minutes, it'll this thing will physically get hot. Um, it, it it it'll dissipate the heat through the uh, aluminum housing on this thing, and it'll actually get almost uncomfortably hot. That is true five watts. Um, you know, not that that's a great judge of it, but you know, reading about it, that's what the deal is. This is five watts of power out um, on the antenna here. So just keep that in mind if you ever want to upgrade to ham radio. So let me explain to you basically what ham radio is and kind of take away some of the myths and and some of the you know the confusion because um, when I got into it I, I was kind of interested in it for a long time um, but you know it, all these buttons and frequencies and what is this a phone can you punch in you know there's all sorts of things like you know that, that just seem confusing about these radios there's nothing mysterious about this this is just a transceiver this is like a walkie-talkie with a lot of power and a very good battery and um, you know just some a really good high quality uh, receive and transmit. That's all it is. A very high quality, you know, we, you know, we, we call them HTs or handy talkies. The rest of the world calls them walkie talkies. But that's all this is. There's no mystery uh, behind it. It receives a much wider bandwidth than most of the radios that you can buy at a, at a big box store or whatever. You can receive shortwave. You can receive all sorts of things, much more bandwidth than you can transmit on. This will only allow you to transmit on the legally allowed uh, frequencies that ham radio is allotted. Um, and this one is a two meter band, um, a 70 centimeter, and also a six meter, which I've like never used. So it's te technically a tri-band uh, radio. Um, really, I, I would call it a good dual band. In fact, I lost the antenna that came with that would actually allow me to transmit on six meters. But the main thing is that you need to know is two meters is probably the most common in most city or urban areas, uh, that as well as 440. So um, two meter bandwidth, and when I say two meters, that's the that's basically the bandwidth. You know, it's a two meter wave, right? That's going through the air, and so it's a taller wave. Then you have the 70 centimeter, which is much shorter. It's it's a, and I'm kind of paraphrasing a lot of the theory. Um, so. The advantages of two meters is it goes farther over long distances, so um, slightly. You know, it's it's actually not like that big a deal. They're both FM bandwidth, so they're both kind of a you know very high frequency um, bandwidth. Um, they're both FM. So, but where seventy centimeters would would excel would be like through buildings, but it would have a shorter uh, transmission dif dif distance. Um, and then the two meters would, would be better maybe out in the woods or, you know, where there's stuff that's not metal blocking you. So you kind of have a nice option, um, with both 440, uh, they call it 440 megahertz, uh, uh, with, and it's actually the 70 centimeters. So those are interchangeable terms, 440 or 70 centimeters. That, th that actually sounds very, very clear. Um, if you can reach the repeater or reach the person you're talking to. So I would say quality wise, it sounds much more FM and much more solid. Two meters is a little bit more, a little bit rougher if you want to get technical about the sound quality, but it, like I said, it can potentially go farther uh, for you distance wise. Um, distance wise, if you're going what we call, I mentioned that in, in the video is it's called simplex. That means, that means I hear, here's my other radio right here. That means I have a radio right here and a radio right here and we're going direct. Okay. So that would be, um, let me draw this out so you guys can understand. Let's see, you know, a radio here, there's your one radio. And then you have another person with a radio here, right? And you might even have somebody over here with a, you know, with another radio mobile unit. And basically you can transmit, you just transmit either way. And they, everybody hears as long as you're within, you know, the, the, the distance, um, you know, as long as you're within reception distance of each of these radios, you can talk as if you had, um, you know, a walkie talkie that's simplex mode. And there are actually groups in this area that only do simplex nets. Now a net is 
uh, kind of the old school term. Um, it's like the internet. It's like a net. So basically, there's people, groups of ham radio operators, and they will have you know a meet at seven o'clock, and we'll you know talk and see if our radios are working and tr experiment with different antennas and stuff like that. Um, I have another radio here that's 50 watts, and, and it, depending on the antenna, you can you know you could probably go 50 or 100 miles simplex mode. Now, you may have somebody in here with a really big giant antenna you know, whatever, you know, he's transmitting out, um, you know, to, to this whole area and he can hear you. And you have somebody out here, you know, in a rural area, for instance, with a, with a handy talkie and he can't hear this person over here. It's just outside the bandwidth. Well, with one of these nets, you can, a lot of times they practice relaying information out to people without any other technology other than what you have in your hand. So that's a simplex net. Okay, that's simplex, right? Very simple. So that's what we consider simplex. So the other thing that you have, and, and so well, the advantage of this is there are there is usually a community of a few people who do this. So you can actually, they practice sending messages back and forth for emergency situations. Now, um, the other mode, um, without getting into too much technology, is things like using a re... You can see my terrible handwriting. Repeaters, okay? So let me see if I can illustrate this. You have a radio, same as same radio that you see here. Okay, there's my radio that represents this guy right here. Okay, and then you have a mountain in the way. Okay, and this could be, you know, you might be 100 miles away from this person over here, right? There's another person over here, let's say over in Madras, Oregon, for instance, you know, we're, and we're in Sandy, Oregon, or Gresham, or whatever. Portland and this can only transmit you know and it, it'll run into this mountain you know what you have to understand about even these smallest radios is if there's no nothing obstructing it you can talk to the space station okay they go that far so in answer to how far do these transmit well how far is a sta space station away thousands of miles so that's how far they go um, but the reality of things on the ground is you have um, you know, things like, you know, you'll eventually you're going to get blocked by things like the curvature of the earth. So you have a radio here and a radio here, and there's the curvature of the earth and things going on. So, uh, you know, typically you're not going to run into that problem with two meters. You're not going to run into the problem of the curvature of the earth blocking your signal to another person's radio, but you will run into something like a mountain or just a you know natural terrain. On top of Mount Hood, I know that there is a tower. Let's draw this really bad looking tower and it's placed up there by a ski lift on the very top, tippy, tippy top of the mountain and that's called a repeater. Okay, that's a repeater right there. All right, so what happens is your, my radio down here will hit, even if it's a very weak signal, it will go up and hit this repeater, okay? It will trigger that repeater to open up, um, and it uses two different frequencies, an input and an output. So it listens on one and outputs on another, okay? So it picks this up, and this repeater might be 100 watts, okay? You have a groups that, that fund this, and you can give donations, or sometimes it's volunteer, sometimes it's just a single you know, private person, you know, who owns these repeaters and does it for a hobby. So um, basically there's equipment up here and a lot of times there's battery backup and solar panels and, you know, various things that keep these running during emergencies. But the point is I know that what frequencies this repeater is on top of Mount Hood, for example, then it amplifies that signal and it goes out farther. And I'm, I'm doing kind of a, I really should be doing this with like circles, but this basically transmits out even much more of a signal, a much more powerful signal than let's say my two watt signal into it. So it amplifies the signal and actually, it actually goes everywhere. So then this person can theoretically on the other side of the mountain hear me talking just fine. And it's, it's almost as good or better than the quality of like a cell phone. You can have here is, and I'm gonna show you this, uh, kind of show you the other the range of things here. This is called a mobile, um, a mobile uh, unit right here, right? Now this is a simple, let me turn this on, see so if I can turn this on here. As you can see, I get, this is hooked up to Mount Hood. 
I know some of the repeaters, that's the repeater that I was talking about with D2S or talking with uh, D2S dad on uh, the other day. And so, you know, you can, you can program these things. Now they are hard to program. You need to look up instructions, but once you get them programmed, you know, these are all shortcuts basically, right? Basically, this is kind of like your classic, you know, FM radio transceiver, you know, uh, mobile setup. So this is a, um, an AGM battery. So there's no harm in running this indoors. It does not leak. It doesn't outgas. Um, anything um, and it's not very it's not super big for this uh, this kind of thing but you know I can put a trickle charger on this and essentially have off-grid power for quite a few hours running low power uh, on that rig right there so right now I'm running you know just a basic you know I don't know where I got this thing it's a two dual bander so I can run two meters or 440 on this radio on this antenna and this sticks on top of a on top of a car or you can put it on a pie on a pie pan if you don't have uh, a car to stick it on but you want something metal that will transmit you know a ground plane and transmit out so you'd stick this on a pie plate or a pie pan and that give you enough ground plane to basically transmit out so uh, pretty simple to use and uh, very you know you know all in one you just plug you basically just just screw this thing in the back it's no problem and uh, never want to you never want to transmit on these things with nothing plugged into it. It'll burn out your uh, your finals, your transmitting finals on here, and it'll wreck all the tran the transistors and everything in there. So you always want to have a load, which is an antenna, plugged into this before you before you you know key up. But super high quality. This is again cast aluminum, cast aluminum, you know mil mil spec type stuff. Very very durable. And you know again these are well over 10 years old. This is probably getting on 15 20, uh, still working just fine. So they make some uh, Chinese ones. Um, they work a little, they work kind of the same, but programming is a lot different in those. And you have to program the inputs and outputs separately on a lot of the newer ones, but these are kind of automatic and they do some nice features that you don't, you don't really know about unless you start operating them. So, um, but if you, if you take the time to figure out the, the new, you know, Wuxong or, um, what are the, there's, there's a few, a few different brands um, out there that are you can get get them for twenty five to fifty dollars for for one of these little radios. So you know, again, not a bad option, and then they're getting better and better as the years go on. So um, you know, if you're just getting into it, I'd recommend one of those if you want to spend a little bit of extra cash and get something that'll last you for you know decades. Obviously, then then go for a Yesu, potentially a um, so a Yesu, a Linko. Um, oh, there's a couple other brands. Um, Kenwood makes a good one. Um, and ICOM is a really high quality brand, but Yesu and ICOM, I think are, are pretty darn good, uh, quality radios for the long term. So yeah, that's basically all I have for today. This is kind of like a primer and intro on ham radio. We are, you know, a ham radio family. So, um, well I am <laughs> basically, um, you know, I've, I've been licensed for quite a while now and you know, it's, uh, something I have to keep brushing up on, um, but the more people that are into the hobby, the better it is. So um, I hope that helps. I hope that kind of, you know, kind of gets you thinking about it. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching.